and Bob often comes a little late. Um, but we do have, I think we have sufficient to start a quorum. Would you agree, Denise? Yes, I counted 11 and I started the recording. Okay, great. So we will uh, commence our meeting of the His Fairfax County History Commission on Wednesday, May 4th at 7.30 p.m. Um, we're going to call uh, call the meeting to order. I am the commission chair, Cheryl Rapetti, and uh, Ann Barnes and David uh, is excused. David Meyer is ex Myers is expected a little on the late side. Um, and we have a uh, guest tonight, um, which are the GMU uh, capstone students uh, led by, um, am I correct in this, led by Akbar Suri? Yes, uh, thank you. And uh, to begin the evening, we're going to talk about the audibility of members' voices to conduct this meeting wholly electronically. The History Commission needs to make certain findings for the record to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. Th these motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Mary Lipsy. Mary Lipsy, Braddock District. Okay. Gretchen Bulova. Gretchen Bulova, Braddock District. All right. Carol Herrick. Carol, I don't think I've seen yet. Mm -mm. We'll come back to her. Uh, Subi Madi, that was my bad. Subi, you're not. Are you online, Subi? She is out of town, and I should have uh, indicated that she was excused. Um, or ex her absence expected. Uh, Elise Murray. Elise Murray from the town from Vienna. Okay. Barbara Nape. Barbara Nape, Reston, Hunter Mill. Ann Stunts. Ann Stunts, Vienna, Vienna, Hunter Mill. Okay. okay. A bit of an echo with your. Uh, yeah, so yes. folks can, can mute their. Mute. Uh, microphones, microphones while we're, while we're <clears throat> working through this. <laughs> Steve Sherman. All right. Phyllis Walker Ford. Phyllis Walker Ford, Clifton, representing New District. Barbara Peters. I don't know if Barbara's logged in yet. Barbara, I think, may actually also have some uh, issues. Uh, Ann Barnes, as I mentioned, is ex uh, excused. Sally Lyons. Sally Lyons in Colchester, Mount Vernon District. Okay. Tammy Manorino. Tammy Manorino, Mount Vernon District. Sue Kovach Schumann. Schumann. Sue Kovach Schumann, Mantua, Providence District. Janae Lindner. Lindner. I haven't seen Janae yet. Jordan Tannenbaum, I think. Springfield District, Fairfax County, Virginia. I was going to say, you didn't get with the county attorney if we went ahead and didn't make sure you could be heard. All right. Um, Esther McCullough. Esther, Esther you... McCullough, Sully District. Awesome. Uh, Robert Beach, Bob, are you there? <clears throat> Lynn Garvey Hodge. Lynn Garvey Hodge, Fairfax, uh, at large commissioner and vice chair. And we are expecting David Meyer later on. Um, I'm going to just come back. Carol Herrick, are you? Has she signed in yet? <clears throat> um, how about uh, I Steve Sherman? Car I'm Carol sorry. Herrick. Yeah, I there see we go. Carol. Mm -hmm. Okay. Carol Herrick, uh, Drainsville District, McLean. Great. Thank you, Carol. Steve Sherman, are you there? Okay. We haven't heard. Uh, Barbara Peters, is she here? Is she, as I said, she may have a. A reason to be absent. 
Uh, Janae? All right. And uh, one last shot at Bob. OK. All right, we will continue the next. At this point, I will pass the virtual gavel to my vice chair, Lynn, so that I may make the appropriate motions. Um, so Lynn is now chairing the meeting. I move that the History Commission certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. Second. Did Lynn was, did you I just second? Yeah. I second. I can't. Okay. I can't. Yeah. I second. No, can. This is Esther. Thank you, Esther. <laughs> I was trying to scoot things along. Yep. Um, so take the vote. Finish the motion. So, um, all in favor of who can hear one another, say aye. 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 Any cannot or opposed? Looks like we're good. Motion carried. All right. Second, I move that the History Commission certify that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission and the public to physically attend this meeting in person, and the usual procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the Fairfax County History Commission conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line, and that the public may access this meeting by calling 171571. 4295982 and entering access code 8376013723732 pound That's the motion completed. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? OK, motion carried. All right. Finally, I move that the History Commission certify that the matters on its agenda today relate to the COVID-19 emergency itself, are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government, and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of the History Commission's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. Second on that. I'll second motion. Second. Third. <laughs> Fourth. <laughs> Lynn. OK, all in favor. I was waiting for a fifth. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Fifth, yeah. <laughs> Do you like rum or bourbon? <laughs> Kool-Aid. Hey guys. Kool-Aid. Kool <laughs> um, and it sounds like uh, Bob Beach is with us. Yes. Yeah. Right. Can I miss roll call? Sorry. Yep, yeah. that's all right. You just and let us know where you're from and that everybody can hear you. Yeah, Fairfax, Virginia. I'm on a roll. <laughs> all right, sounds good. OK. Thank you. All right, so continuing along, I don't know if there's any. Oh, gavel. thank you. Yes, gavel. I need that gavel back. Thank you. I appreciate yes, I that. Um, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me. Jan I think believe I believe Janae has joined as well. OK, Janae, can we just do a quick sound check for you? Can you yes. uh, please I'm give here. us a <clears throat> and you represent what district? Springfield. OK, all right. And I think we can all hear. Does anybody have any problems hearing Janae or Bob? I'm here. You're fine. All right. Thank you. Great. Um, OK, uh, so we're going to proceed with um, our presentation. I know we also have a variety of staff members um, uh, that we'll we'll call on. We'll make sure you guys can be heard when we do our staff reports. Um, so thank you for coming this evening and thank you to our GMU capstone students. I'm going to hand the this portion of the meeting over to you and your presentation. All right, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, we are very excited to present uh, our final capstone project to you guys. Um, my name is Akbar Suri uh, and I'm the team lead for our capstone group and we're going to go ahead and just first share with you our final presentation from class, uh, which provides a little bit of just the background of the project. Um, and I'm going to quickly go through those slides uh, and then focus on the live demo portion at the end of the actual website, um, just so you guys can get a, a feel of how the website turned out and provide any feedback or questions that you guys may have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let me start sharing my screen here. All 
right. Can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So I'm, uh, just to recap, uh, this is our Fairfax County African American Historical Inventory uh, final capstone project. Um, quick introduction of the team. My name is Akbar Suri. I'm the team lead. Uh, and our team is made up of IT majors from George Mason University who are all seniors uh, graduating this semester. Uh, Brian Doe, Steve Chegu, Samuel Pitch, Roman Patrick, and Fernando Galarza all make up the rest of Alpha Team 4. So just a quick overview of the project. As I'm sure you all know, the African American Historical Inventory was approved in October of 2020 um, by the Fairfax County History Commission for the research and uh, knowledge, preservation of knowledge of the history of African American uh, residents and communities within Fairfax County. The inventory includes uh, African American contributions, churches, homes, schools, and more. Um, the inventory committee was formed in January of 2021 and is led by commissioners uh, Phyllis Walker Ford and Mary Lipsy, who we've been working directly with since last September. Uh, and the completed database is going to be hosted by George Mason Libraries as part of an open collaboration between the History Commission and GMU. The goal of the project is to consolidate a mass collection of records and resources into one online researchable database uh, with the purpose of spreading knowledge of the African American community and history within Fairfax County and hopefully potentially start up similar projects in the future, such as like a Hispanic inventory or Asian American inventory or something similar. To quickly look into the original business process, um, the pre prior to the creation of the database, if an individual was trying to research these type of um, this type of information, the data is, was scattered uh, and you know in many different places as opposed to one consolidated resource. And our goal was to basically create a process where users can request access to the database, log in, we enter the data, the ent entry is created, and it goes live onto the website. Um, so going over that changed business process, we estimate that these are just projections, but if a user was conducting about nine hours of research prior, we're estimating that it would be brought down to about maybe three hours of research because all the data is in one easy to use search engine. Uh, it's available online uh, and it's not scattered and, you know, uh, sitting on bookshelves somewhere, you know, uh, it's all in one online place. The improvements that we project are um, the consolidation of entries into one searchable database will allow for easy exploration, allowing time to find an entry to be greatly reduced each time something is added to the database. Savings we're projecting like about two to three hours of research per individual research project to be saved, uh, potentially about one to three hours of research per entry, uh, and overall just more extensive research in less time. The solution that we came up with had to first address some of the challenges in our project. We had unstructured data coming in from many different sources that needed to be put in one normalized standard fashion. Um, early on, the goal was to have the project hosted by the Fairfax County History Commission IT team, um, but they pulled out their ability to host. So we had to kind of go with a change of plans in terms of hosting. Uh, so that was uh, one of our major challenges. And thankfully, we, we came up with that collaboration with George Mason Libraries to address that problem. Our solution uh, is a first of its kind innovation. Um, it's a centralized database that will provide users with the resources for the purpose of research. research and from our understanding, the History Commission has not had a centralized resource like this before for researching uh, different objects from different di districts. So we're proud to help launch something like that. Um, it's an easy to use, easy to manage platform um, that's ideal for a project like this because it's hosted by GMU's Omeka database platform. Uh, and its purpose is to host educational projects like this. Uh, and the platform is easy to use uh, for both users and administrators. Um, the users will be able to easily search for items on the website while admins will be easily able to scale the platform and make any modifications on the back end without much issue. We had to undergo some testing to make sure that um, our website was up to standard. So some of the major things that we wanted to address were the uncertainty of hosting, the low budget and the large amounts of data. Um, so we went into our testing knowing that these were things that we would have to make sure we overcame. Uh, things that we tested within the website were both 
or input and output, testing of the geolocation map, testing item tags and relational item page linking, and then the contact page functionality as well. Uh, and all these tests pass, um, thankfully. Um, solution implementation also requires some training as we are planning on passing this project along to uh, graduate te teaching assistants as part of George Mason to keep the database updated uh, and maintained throughout the life of the project. Um, the, per the diagram shown here is basically going to be the life cycle of adding entries into the database. We receive the templates from the commissioners. They're created into entries that are input into the database. We'll receive feedback on those entries either from the public by, via the contact us page or from the commissioners or other users um, of the website. And then finally, we'll refine anything that goes into the website or is added to the website um, uh, as it is updated. The training also comes with documentation materials that we'll be providing to the GTAs. Uh, and this is just a couple of screenshots from what that training material is going to be like. This is a um, image of the back end of the website and the training basically goes through and shows the GTAs how to add things to the back end of the website so that they can, you know, appear on the public page. And uh, now I'm going to transition over to the demonstration portion of our uh, project. So when we, this is going to be the homepage of the history, uh, African American historical inventory. Uh, so you're going to be greeted with uh the bar along the top for browsing uh, as well as a featured item a featured collection and then a, a list of the most recently added added items to the database um so uh, and then just to quickly touch on the about page for the website um if users want to learn more about the background of the project we go into the origins of the african-american historical inventory um, the collaborative effort between George Mason and the History Commission, uh, and then Commissioners uh, Lipsy and Ford asked us to include information about me and my capstone team in here as well. So we're going to go go ahead and uh, include information about ourselves on this page as well. Uh, in the near future, we're going to update that. Um, and then also with the seals over here, these are going to be on every page of the website. Users can see that this was a joint project between Fairfax County, the History Commission, and then George Mason Libraries. Um, so back to the home page of the website, uh, just to get started with uh, viewing an item, uh, we're going to start with the featured item on the website right now, which is the Alfred Audric House. I love so it. If you just click on the object, it'll take you right to it. Um, and you're going to be greeted with all the information in the database about the object. So the title, date, description, uh, creator relation, which is going to be any other items within the database that are directly related to this item. Um, scrolling down, you see a little bit more information such as the location, district, any additional notes. This item is part of the homes collection, which we will go more into collections later. And then these are the tags for the item, which will also go into tags a little bit more as well later. Um, the relations, I think, are a very important part of the website because they kind of allow are what allow the database to be dynamic and allow items to be related to each other directly. So if you click on one of the related items, so it's such as the Audrix Corner historical marker, it'll take you right over to that item as well. You can learn whatever you need to know about that information, get the info, and then travel right back to your old object uh, and travel back and forth um, without any real fuss. So that's a, in terms of the relational aspect of the database, this was a an important feature. Um, if a user wants to just browse the different items within the website, they just have to click over here on the Browse Items tab. By default, everything is sorted by chronological order of when it was most recently added to the website. Um, but users can also browse by creator. Um, they can sort by uh, title. Um, and then one of the most powerful features, I believe, for the website is going to be browsing by tag right over here. So every item in the database is tagged with its district, what type of item it is, and then any other relevant information that would work as a tag. Um, so let's say you, an individual wants to browse more information on Drainsville District. All they need to do is click on the Drainsville tag. 
and it'll take them directly to all the items in the database that are directly related to Drainsville District. So if they want to learn more about Camp Beckwith, because that's in Drainsville di District, they just have to click on it, takes them right over to it. They can learn all the information they need, click back onto Drainsville, learn more about that. Or if they want to browse by a new tag, they just have to click over here and it'll take them right back over there. Yeah, and this is, this is a word cloud, so basically, all the uh, bigger words have more items in the database. Smaller words have fewer items and it's dynamic, so it's always going to be changing based on uh, the items that are making up the database. One of the more powerful tools is going to be the uh, advanced search right over here. So users always have the option to just search by keyword up here in the search bar, but if they want to do a more advanced search such as narrowing by specific fields, uh, searching by collection, searching by item type, uh, geographical location, um, tag. They basically have the option to get as specific as they'd like over here. Uh, so we anticipate that more advanced users would make use of this feature um, to try and find more specific objects within the database that they're looking for um, and allow them to explore some of the more less known items uh, within the database using this advanced search feature. Able to join yet? Yes, they're still going on. The meeting started at seven. I don't know what time they're in, but uh, seven. Moving on to the uh, collections. Uh, if you if a user wants to browse by collections, um, all the items in the database uh, are tagged into a specific collection. So it's either a park, a farm, a historical site, historical society, publication or whatnot, um, allowing it to be a part of these individual groups. And if an individual wants to browse all the publications in the website, uh, all they have to do is click on the publications. It'll give them a quick description of what a publication is. And then these are all the publication items that we have within the website. And then all they have to do to learn more about it is just click on the item right over there. Um, so collections is definitely a great way to browse the website and search for specific items that users are looking for. Uh, one of the more cool features we have is the uh, interactive map where users can see where exactly within Fairfax County some of these items are located. Um, each page of the map uh, shows about 10 different items. And if a user wants to see one of these specific items, all they have to do is click on it. Uh, if they want to browse directly onto the page of that item. They click on the item. It'll show them all the information they need, the relevant files, and then the geolocation again at the end over there. And if they want to just travel back to the map, they can. Um, there's about 100 or so items within the database that have geolocation tags. So there's about 10 different pages on the map for users to browse. Um, but we think that's a fun feature that users can use um, to browse items by geographical location. This next tab is going to be the general resources tab. This is going to be a number of different informational or research topics that did not necessarily fit into the uh, database, the standard uh, database format, but we wanted to include it as um, uh, something that users can use to do more advanced research. Uh, so these are going to be collections of resources, publications, links, you know, just more information um, that users can use. And they're extensive. These were all put together by yourselves, I believe. Um, and they'll all be available to the users to browse through. We have the general resources over here, research topics, and then a few more specific pages, such as the African Americans Working for Change, fraternal or organizations within uh, Fairfax, uh, Virginia and more, and users can browse these items and get more information on these by just clicking on them. Um, so this is going to be again for users that are looking for more advanced research. Uh, and then we also finally have the contact your commissioner page. So for anyone who wants to get more information, has questions or feedback, um, we gave them the option to directly visit the Fairfax County History Commission's website using this link right over here. Or they also have the option to email their commissioner uh, by finding their district. Um, if they just click on their commissioner's email, it'll directly take them to a mail to link so they can craft an email. Um, and then they also have the phone number 
and all this information was pulled directly from the History Commission website, so it should be accurate and up to date. Um, and then finally, uh, that just takes us back to our about page again, which we went over briefly in the beginning. Um, and that makes up our website. Um, so we're really proud of the work that we were able to put together um, in collaboration with you guys. Um, but I'd like to open the floor for any questions or anything that you guys might have or any feedback whatsoever. Thank you for listening. Oh, this is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> this is Esther McCullough. I am delighted that Wonderful. you took the time and the effort as a team to work on this. This, this is tremendous. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We were all very proud and very excited to work on something so um, unique and something that is going to provide some real benefit, we hope, to the county and people who are looking to learn. Um, and yeah, we're just grateful for the opportunity and we're happy we could do something that, you know, we could be proud of and hopefully you guys could be proud of too. Absolutely. This is, our, this this is, is Barbara Tiffany Manorino. Oops, sorry. Oops. No. Um, this is Barbara Naif, and um, I just wanted to say, you know, we started this as just an idea. It was rather amorphous, and we weren't quite sure how to go about it because no one had done it before. And to end up with this incredible program, uh, I can only applaud you all. It's just, it's just amazing. So thank you. Just thank you, Tammy, and then Lynn, and then Jordan. Yes, this is Tammy Manorina from the Mount Vernon District, and I wanted to thank you for uh, for your patience in all of these things coming from us, um, you know, in even more than one wave. So that's wonderful. And um, and I just wanted to note that I think that your um, your estimate of the time savings is low because um, just in putting this together, um, you think about people physically traveling to the Virginia Room or to historic records. Um, you, you know, there would be that and, and whether they actually could find things. I, I think there are um, things put together here for the first time that that maybe people wouldn't even it wouldn't even be possible for people to find. So yeah. um, so well done. Thank you so much. Yeah, we had to sort of come up with some sort of projection, you know, in terms of quantifying how, you know, how much benefit this would provide and we didn't want to get too crazy with uh, right. our estimates <laughs> um, but we definitely like i don't i don't even know how easy it would be to like you said find any of this information out there yeah. so to have it on one website should definitely be you know a big time saver for people absolutely mm -hmm. okay i think lynn and then jordan um, first of all, again, I want to thank you all, and I do believe what you have done uh, with some wonderful guidance of of history commissioners too, yes, um, yeah. who took this task on. Um, yeah. This is just so impressive. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of questions, and you may have addressed them at the front end of of when you were talking. So sure. I apologize if this is repetitive. I, I ended up getting a, a a text at the beginning I needed to take care of. So no here here are my two questions how and and who will continue to maintain this mm -hmm. and and when will this actually be going live and again you you may have already addressed that i apologize if i missed that so the uh plan for transition is to um because the website is being hosted by george mason uh university libraries the admins have to have George Mason credentials in order to log into the website. So we're working with the uh, library team to create a transition plan where basically any updates or modifications that need to be made will be um, the task of a GTA, a graduate teaching assistant, um, either part of the history department or at the IT department. Um, uh, but they'll be working directly with the library team that we've been working with since our collaborative effort started. Um, and we're going to be providing them training materials um, and the uh, commissioners that we've been working with should still be in contact with uh, the library team. So um, we're working on the the final plan for transition, but the the overall plan is to have basically GTAs take care of that. Uh, in the future as things get updated. Um, and then as far as the the going live, um, the website is live right now and available to be found um, if you type in the address, but the library uh, staff has indicated that the 
URL that we're using is most likely not going to be the final URL. It needs to be transitioned to a different website. So um, the website's ready to go, but we don't want to launch it per se without that final URL. Uh, that way we don't have to change any information moving forward um, and letting people know how to navigate to the website. If that makes Jordan, sense. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan, uh, go ahead and then, um, sorry, just Amy and uh, Janae after that. Great, so Akbar, terrific, terrific. And team, Akbar and team. A um, couple of quick questions. Is it possible to um, for this website to include film? Um, it should be uh, because we can associate individual like so, for instance, this entry has a, a picture associated with it. We should be able to associate films with it as well. I haven't double checked because we haven't received any video. Mm -hmm. um, but the only thing to consider is um, as part of the collaborative effort with GMU, they're covering all the costs of hosting and film if it's not too much it wouldn't really be an issue but if we if we talk if we're talking about a lot of different videos then it mm -hmm. would start adding up so that would be just something that we would have to clear with the uh the library team before we add too many too many movies to the website but it is mm -hmm. it should be possible okay i'm thinking you know home films and things like that that yeah. might be interesting uh, feeling. the other question is um uh, documents. Let's say there's an original document, um, and so um, can you essentially digitize those documents so that they would be so we could see the original documents, or is that is that is that possible to do on this? Yeah, on this if it, yeah. It, as long as it can be scanned and yeah. made into a PDF, it it can be added. So you know. Um, Jordan, we have one on there already. The Colored right Citizens now. Association booklet is on there. Uh, okay, so we could get the whole like we could just cop, photograph the the whole copy, and then and then it's on this website. I mean, so that's a way of preserving these these as well, correct? Right. That that should that should definitely be possible, um, as long as again the file size doesn't get too large. You know, if we're not uh, uploading like really high resolution images of like hundreds and hundreds of pages, then it shouldn't be an issue. Um, right. But from my understanding, based on the capabilities of the website, that should that should be no problem. Right. And one final question. Sure. So now we know how much time how much uh, time it saves for the researching process. Yeah. How how much money uh, did this would this cost if we had to pay for something like this as opposed to the the library did for us it 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 depends on the size of the website um right now i don't think it would be exceeding anywhere between like 200 to 500 like a year or something just because it's a lot of text and it's a few images um but um if we continue to add more stuff um then based on the size of the database the cost would continue to grow and I do think because this is going to be a living database that continues to be grown and, you know, as more stuff gets added, it's going to continue to grow. I do think that cost will rise in the future. Um, so um, but when we did some initial research on potentially uh, asking for a budget to host it, um, the projections that we had were nothing too crazy. It was around like um, I think it was two, two to three hundred for about a year um, of service. Um, but, you know, the the GMU libraries provided us with the hosting and they also gave us the platform that we use to build it. And it, it really is a really good platform that I think fit best for this type of website. Great, great. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Amy, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to echo the commissioner's comments as somebody who's in the throes of doing this kind of research right now. Um, I would agree that your your time is you're, you're being awfully awfully nice. It's probably less less than you're even thinking. Um, yeah. um, what I really appreciate though is that you you took the time to make it relational. Um, yes. Sometimes it's when you're researching, you don't know the connections that the person who who has um, provided the item 
to your database yeah. knows. And so that just will open up more open little up doors, doors and I'm just and thrilled I'm, with it. Yeah, we felt like that was, you know, it's really cool to find one thing, but if you can't actually figure out how this relates to things outside of it, then it's sort of pointless, you know? Um, so that's why we wanted to give not just collections, not just tags, not just those relation. We wanted to give a number of different ways that people could find, you know, the geolocation thing I think can be really cool if people like say, hey, these things are right by my house, you know? I actually did that with a number of things here. So um, yeah, I think giving people options was really important um, in terms of making this a fun website to browse, you know? So yeah, definitely. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Janae, Bob, and then Sue. So Janae. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, of course. You know, unfortunately, I am new to the History Commission. Okay. I would love to have some material that you could send to me. Um, I would really appreciate that. Or Cheryl, do I get it from you? I don't understand your question. Well, this program that has been made, which is just phenomenal, I really don't know much about it. The inventory is on our website right now, a, um, uh, a, a PDF version of it, all text, and then they'll be launching this later on in June, we hope, yes? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, okay. sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah so, but okay. we have, a, we have a, a text version on our website right now, Janae. Okay, so that I can I can get that text and I can send it to some people. Okay. My second question was, are you going to be graduated by next week? Uh, we all walk on the 21st. So uh, just a couple weeks from now. Uh, hopefully by next week, I think finals should be over. But Honestly, it's just been so crazy recently. My schedule is all over the place. I have no idea. So, um, but the yeah, only, the only reason why I ask that is because uh, we're uh, some of us are meeting with the Black Lives Next Door project. Oh, cool! And it'll be on Monday at five, okay. and I'm thinking, ooh, this will be fun. <laughs> you, yeah, I think I because could be. this is separate. This is separate from Black Lives Next Door, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything to do with that organization. Yeah. It has nothing. It, okay. Okay. But it's in our resource list. Okay. The information's okay. in our resource. It's either in general sources or our research topics, but it's there. Okay. okay. Perfect. Well, maybe what I'll do is we'll email back and forth. I'll get your email contact and and but it's it's very it's wonderful. It's just what's needed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Bob and then Sue. Bob? Yeah, it's always better to hit that button. Yeah. How much time, just, just one question. Uh -huh. How much time do you have invested in creating this website? Ooh. Um, I don't, honestly, uh, that's a that's a good question. We put in we put in a lot of time uh, building this, and I really uh, honestly I wanted to mention this earlier. First, I want to applaud uh, you guys and the commissioners that we directly worked with, Mary Lipsy and Phyllis Walker Ford, because they worked with us directly. They gave us all the information, and you know we just put it on a website. So this was like um, they were really patient with us and. We were busy as students, you know, and it was really awesome working with them the whole past two semesters. So uh, we're really grateful for the experience. Um, but yeah, me and my team really took this, I think, very seriously. We knew that, you know, we had to pass this class to graduate. So, um, you know, we had to we had to take it seriously. But um, to be able to not just go create some website for a business that probably won't get used, you know, like like. Um, some groups did. Uh, we got to create something that was really different. And every time we went up and talked about our project and, you know, got to tell people about it, we were really excited and proud. Um, so I know some of my team members put in a lot of hours just putting things into this website. When the when we had to figure out that agreement with GMU um, last semester, when there was a change of plans in terms of hosting, 
that was a whole thing. You know, I feel like that was a, a big learning experience in terms of, you know, adjusting and pivoting and just learning how to make things work. Um, so, yeah, I can honestly say like this will be probably the single biggest thing that I take away from my my education uh, at Mason because uh, it was such a it was such a experience in the full sense of that word. So thank you guys for the opportunity. Yeah, well, All right. everyone wins. It's great. Yeah. And yeah, I'm gonna stick with that. Colombo just that was my one more question. So. Next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Sue, and then Esther. If I'm not sure if you uh, were also waiting, and I think uh, we'll try and wrap it up after Esther there. Okay, I have a dumb question. All questions are not dumb, right? Um, no and then a comment. What is a Dublin Core? So the Dublin Core is um, there are certain categories that. Uh, are relevant to every item in the database. So things like title, date, creator, um, every item, whether it's a church, whether it's a school, whether it's a person or a building, they all have these features or elements. So that's the Dublin core. We actually okay. wanted to try and remove that from the website because we didn't feel like it was relevant. <laughs> Otherwise, I think it's uh, confusing. Yeah, it, it raises more questions, but yeah, it's great. Anyway, this was a great job, and I think you had a lot of fun. Personally, I think that mixing something like this history, the humanities with IT was a real achievement for which yeah. I thank you. And I would like to say that two of those students um, in, in your project were my husband, wow. Dr. Schumann's. And he gave a cost estimate about how much time and uh -huh. uh, you, you spent on this, 1,500 to 2,000 hours, he said, and it would cost at least 100000 to $300,000 for this. So we really appreciate yeah, it. That somewhere else, that's yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Our duty to the Hope county. Let's keep this yeah. updated. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Esther, did you have a, a final question? Yeah. Yes, I had a final question. I, I'm just over the moon. With this. Uh, so you said we could view it. Yes. Is, is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. Do we uh, go to what was at the top silver box? Yeah, I type it into the, uh, the chat if you guys want. That oh, way please. you can just. Uh, but um, as I mentioned earlier, that that link is going to change in the future. So. Okay. Uh, I'll definitely but tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, not not by tomorrow. No, so okay, uh, good. Yeah, so as long as uh, for 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 a good while, it should it should still be up there. Um, but I'll definitely let uh, let Fellas Mary. Mary. Yeah, as soon as as soon as that changes. So thank you and thank your whole team. Of course, no problem. Thank you. Really a stunning job. Something to to definitely be proud of and, and which reflects really positively on, on us. You made us look good. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Guys um, again. And thanks for and, having me. And, and, and a real contribution, I think, to uh, to Fairfax County history. So thank you. Appreciate um, it. All Amen. right. Thank you guys. <laughs> I just want to thank them because they put up with a I call myself the techno dinosaur. <laughs> they put up with it because I have very little uh, knowledge of it. And they're very patient and, and they did just a tremendous job. Oh, no, you really both appreciate it. So wonderful. Um, it was it's been an honest pleasure working with you guys for the past few months. So again, thank you for the experience. You're welcome. This is wonderful. Nice collaboration. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thank you. So we, we, we are going to move along, although it would be nice just to stop there and enjoy this at greater length. But um, we're going to I need a motion to uh, approve the minutes and pay the clerk. I move we approve the minutes and pay the clerk. Second. This is Esther. I second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any opposition? Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. All right. I'm going to move along to Treasurer's Report. Sue. Uh, excuse me, uh, Cheryl. This sure. is Steve Sherman. 
Uh, I logged Hi, in at 740. I logged in at 740 a few minutes late. And I just want to state Steve Sherman from uh, Lee District in Franconia. Thank you so much, Steve, and also David uh, Meyer. Uh, David, if you want to say hi, just to make sure we can hear you. I thought I started a chat from David. Oh, I just. Here we go. Here. <laughs> okay. Just Thank wanted to make you. sure that you, you oh, have connectivity. A late, a late arrival to the meeting. I had another commitment that I uh, had to to go to. I'm here now. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. OK, um, Stu, Sue, uh, Treasurer's report. This will be quick. We have money, a lot of it, $55,638. And we paid the clerk, but did not spend anything else this past month. Uh, history conference carryover is the same. That didn't change. I didn't get anything new, but we still have uh, $2,021 for that brief. Thank you. Um, actually, don't you have uh, conference expenses of 330? From that was from the month before. Okay. That was carried over. Okay. All right. Sta Thirty today. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, staff reports. Uh, starting with Amy. Hi, history commissioners. First of all, I am so excited about that project. I'm still not over it. Um, that is really <laughs> amazing work. So thank you for everybody who spent time on that. I know as somebody who's, like I said, I'm going to the courthouse tomorrow. I'll be at the Virginia Room Friday. <laughs> it, it, putting that all together is a tremendous time saver, not just for, for historians, but also for the county. You know, saving my salary is good for the taxpayers as well. So nice, nice job. Um, so our report is is relatively short this month. Um, the tenant house at Mount Air had been approved for demolition by the ARB a few times at this point, and we finally got all of our ducks in a row to have that demolished and archaeologists were on site to make sure that um, the house went down without damaging any of the archaeological resources there and that went off without a hitch. Um, did the same kind of monitoring at Eleanor C. Lawrence Park when um, the natural resources folks were getting rid of some invasive species along the trails. Um, there, there are archaeological sites along the trails there at ECL, and so we had to send some monitors out to make sure that nothing got pulled up by the roots, that sort of thing. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I've been talking about it a lot. <laughs> We've got a new uh, web page for the public to follow along with our cemetery survey efforts. Um, I'm, I'm already, I think as of today, I'm up to 38 people who have emailed me. This is before I've actually launched any outreach. Um, people are emailing me with their interest, willingness to volunteer, um, asking about their family cemeteries or their family's connections. Um, so that's been really gratifying um, to have that just be uh, coming coming to me instead of me going to them, which I will do anyhow, but um, it's nice to have people on board and ready to ready to work. Um, we met with, well, I met with uh, members of the Germantown Cemetery Group, uh, including Commissioners Lindner and uh, Lipsy to learn about their project, share some objectives, um, plan for some future collaborations, and honestly, just listen to the lessons learned from their project. It was really informative and um, what a great bunch of folks doing really good work. We presented um, Monday night. Mary and I could just keep running into each other um, at the Fairfax Genealogical Society. Again, just trying to let everybody who's been doing this kind of cemetery work um, know what we're up to in the hopes of sharing resources. And that was a pleasure to meet those folks. Um, highlight of my month was Saturday. Uh, we rededicated the summer cemetery along with um, the Daughters of the American Revolution, Henry Clay chapter. Um, they have adopted that cemetery and done a ton of work on cleanup. Um, and they, Francis, uh, Francis Summers marker had been vandalized in, I think it was the mid 1990s, some, somebody kicked it over and snapped it. Um, and so the DAR had that replaced and it is not a cheap fix. Um, so they were able to get some grants to get that done. And it's been, I think three years 
<laughs> in process, Mary, if that's right. Um, but it was a beautiful day. We had uh, descendants from the Summers family and from the Duty family. And for me, the real highlight was I was able to, to talk to a descendant. Um, she was 94 years old. And when I sat to talk to her, she said, I, I always worried what would happen if I wasn't here to clean this up. And now I know it'll be taken care of. And that just absolutely broke my heart and melted my heart and uh, showed me how much that work means means to folks. It was really, really gratifying. Um, so May, if if the rain can hold off, we'll bring more work at Riverbend Park um, uh, and then analysis and progress for reporting on a number of projects uh, at Hidden Pond Nature Center, Mount Air, Ashgrove, and Patriot Park North. Those are projects that had been done in the past. We were just catching up. Um, without our volunteers during COVID, we had a lot of processing we use volunteer folks to help us process and so their absence was felt so now we're able to analyze everything now that we've kind of caught up um, and finally we are thrilled to say that we were um, successful to regrade a collections manager position which was advertised last week um, the last week of april uh, it's it's a bump up it's an hrs3 and it has uh, responsibilities for managing both archaeological and museum collections so if you know anybody who would like to manage our archaeological and museum collections that advertisement closes may 5th that's tomorrow so tell them to get it in quick and that's my update I'm ready for questions if you have any commissioners. All right. Thank you. Thank Amy. you. It's good to hear from you. My pleasure. Good to see y'all. Amy, all right. it's really exciting to have you be a part of everything. It, it was really a pleasure. I, I loved meeting you and um, getting to see some folks in 3D was really nice as well. So thank Wasn't you for taking nice? the time. <laughs> yes, it really was. <laughs> thank you. All right, next up is Heritage Conservation Branch, Stephanie uh, Langton. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Great. thank you. Um, just a few updates this evening for Heritage Conservation Branch. Um, under operations and maintenance, wood window repairs um, at Ashgrove and White Gardens have started um, and will go through uh, July. And the funds were awarded through the Environmental Improvement Program for um, historic house efficiency improvements. Um, also, recent approval um, with engineering company TMG will allow work to begin at Drainsville Tavern um, to repair termite damage. Um, under Historic Sites Volunteer Corps, the next HSVC event is a landscape cleanup um, scheduled for Saturday, May 14th at Fairfax Arms. And just two updates for the resident curator program. A pre-construction meeting was held, <clears throat> excuse me, was held at Elmore Farmhouse um, by the curator service source and its contractor. Uh, work will begin this summer pending um, county permit approvals uh, with plans to complete all improvements within six to 12 months. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll be um, out there weekly once the work begins, kind of monitoring the work and it'll be a it'll be a busy summer, but that's really exciting. Um, the only other update for RCP uh, over the past several weeks, um, the Park Authority has received many comments and questions about the program's uh, proposal for Margaret White Gardens, the application we received. Um, and so to foster, you know, continued dialogue on the topic, the Park Authority actually has extended the deadline um, for public comment until Friday, May 13th. Um, and a frequently asked questions document is available on the resident curator website, which answers a lot of the recurring kind of questions we were receiving. Um, and also there are recordings of previous um, RCP evaluation team meetings that are available on the website as well. Um, and so we'll keep we'll keep everyone um, updated with our our next steps. Are there any questions? OK, thank you so much, Stephanie. Appreciate thank the you. update. Um, and Chris, you're up next. Virginia Room. All right. Well, um, segueing off of Amy's uh, report, I saw the old museum collections manager 
the other weekend at Fairfax History Day, and uh, she seems to be enjoying her new position with the city of Fairfax, even though we, we miss her at Fairfax County. Um, then speaking of History Day, staff of the Virginia Room had a table. We had an outreach table there at Blenheim. Uh, we talked with a lot of members of the public, and we also saw uh, abolitionist Angelina Grimke, who just also happens to look <laughs> like uh, Commissioner Garvey Hodge. So that was a, it was a fun day. Uh, that same day, the Friends of the Virginia Room also had their annual library book sale, and they surpassed all of their records in the past. It was a really awesome. successful book sale. And last but not least, our beloved colleague, uh, Virginia Room librarian Laura Wickstead, uh, retired on Friday, April 22nd, and we miss her very much, and we are currently looking for a new Virginia Room librarian. So that process is just getting started, um, but that's all I have for the report tonight. Okay. And who, wait, who is the acting, who's the acting Virginia Room librarian? Uh, someone thought it was a good idea to, to make me <laughs> acting, so here I am, acting. <laughs> yes, well, how come that isn't in the report? I object to your report. You're perfect, you're perfect, Chris. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, All thank right. you. Thank you, Chris. Um, Denise, planning and development. Yes, hi, everybody. Okay, um, I'm not going to go through uh, the whole litany, but I will. I have a couple of updates uh, to what you have printed in front of you. So, staff recently reached out um, to the History Commission's African American History Committee for their input on the draft boundaries for the historical Black communities put forth by the consultant. So, I've asked for um, responses by this Friday. However, um, just this afternoon, I coordinated with the committee chairs, uh, Mary Lipsy and Phyllis Walker Ford, and we're going to invite the consultant to the next African American History Committee meeting on Tuesday. Uh, so this way she she can you guys can talk to each other. And I think that's probably the best rather than my being a conduit for the information. So thank you very much for um allowing that to happen. And um, Mary Ruffin, I reached out to her and she was happy to do it. So, um, and then the second update is um, on the soapstone connector. Laura Arsena uh, recently reached out to FCDOT for an update on the MOA and they indicated that they are planning to have a public information meeting this spring, possibly this month to present the draft MOA to the stakeholders. So other than that, um, I'm happy to answer any questions about anything in my staff report. Okay. All right. Thank you. That, thank you. Thank you so much for updating Ada. And that sounds like a, a good meeting for the for AAHI. Um, all right. Uh, so we're going to continue on and just I'm. Sorry, just went making a little time notation. Um, unfinished business. Uh, Sue, do you want to give a brief update as to what our stat the status is with um, regard to the Fairfax County Courthouse? Yes, uh, if we met two and a half weeks ago with Supervisor Polchek and Denise's uh, input was invaluable. I'm very glad that she was there to give us a better idea of the cost estimates. Uh, Supervisor Polchek According to her chief of staff today, said she is still committed to looking for money to find this to fund this. But that's as far as as we we have it. We don't have the money. And when we spoke to her, um, and I suggested the word grants that maybe we should look for grants, she shut us down and said, "No, no, that won't be necessary." And I think G Janae and I cheered that she is really committed. She knows this is a, a national treasure in her district, and. Um, I, I did ask David as both the history commissioner and the mayor to uh, give her a call and see uh, how much they can work out. Um, Heather Bollinger did extend to the entire board of supervisors an invitation to come see the courthouse to come for garden week for the day it was open or for her a personal tour but they're right now bogged down with the budget and nobody seems to have time yeah i know amy's shaking her head i mean every single one just they just cannot do it now this is on their minds but they physically cannot get themselves there to look at it 
and I, I don't think some of them actually have been in the, in the historic courthouse. So perhaps when this is all done, if we can get some money, it'd be really great to have some of us there um, with with Heather and uh, Denise and um, everyone else and uh, go from there. But yes, I, I have been asking almost daily, is there anything she knows we are um, and can be a pest? And I think Joe Mondaro is doing everything he can and looking at the numbers to help us. Yay, right. Thank you, Sue. That's wonderful that you were able, you and Janae were able to meet and and Denise too and, and make progress on that. That's great. And I have to say, Sue is a go getter. My goodness. She I did a great job. Pest. Being a journalist you. means you have to be a pest. So, yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Sue. Uh, really do appreciate you taking the lead on that. Uh, Jordan, do you want to update on the Dulles Airport Capital One Lounge since we did actually see uh, additional information about that recently? Yes. OK, there we go. So um, it looks like we've had an, an impact on the project. Uh, in that they have uh, made some changes that we recommended, not all the changes we recommended. Uh, the individual that we've been dealing with uh, is no longer there. He's been replaced and we uh, received a determination of no adverse effect on the new revised project. Um, I reviewed it and um, there's still some issues that, uh, that, that I think need to be dealt with. Uh, and I'm not convinced that uh, unless they are dealt with that it would be a no adverse effect. I haven't seen what the SHPO has commented on if they've commented yet. Uh, so I prepared those comments, uh, complimented them on the things that they've changed uh, and recommended that they look into some other aspects of the project that I think still need to be um, still recommended that they be thought that they think about revising them. So. Um, Cheryl, have you sent those comments through yet? Or are they still? I, I haven't uh, actually sent it out yet, um, and you know I will put the letter in uh, share file for commissioners to take a look at. But uh, but yeah, right. the letter just it just needs to be put on on letterhead and find the proper emails to send it to. Okay, but I think the important thing is that I don't know how many other folks made comments <clears throat> on the original proposal, but they certainly acknowledged uh, that they appreciated our comments and responded to them, which I think is important. Yeah, we were mentioned a few times in the uh, yeah. uh, subsequent report, uh, the right. updated one. Yep. That's excellent. Having an impact. Yes, making a difference. What we do matters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we don't have any uh, real new business, but I'm going to move on to Elise's uh, budget report. OK, it's really fairly simple. As you said, we've got lots of money. We have $55,000 in the DPD focus account. We have another 21,000 that's going to be coming in July. The long term commitments that we have that might restrict our funds are 10,500 marker proffer funds that we shouldn't spend on anything but marker proffers. And there's the $7,700 that Edith Sprouse earned through her bicentennial indexing. The fiscal request for FY 2004 will be due in the fall. The Commission should focus on updating the 21,000 base budget to accurately reflect current costs and programs. I attach the base budget so you can look at it at some point in the future. I also attached for your review and future consideration a financial review plan. I, I came up with this. I've run it by Cheryl and Anne, and I would like in the future to discuss adopting this policy. That's it. All right. Thank you. Mary. Um, Elise, I just had a question about the marker budget. Mm -hmm for $4,200. I'm going to be in my report talking about how the costs have gone up. Um, Mary, please, that 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 number was set last fall. OK. So you, we're talking, we have 56,000 set, we'll have $76,000. There's plenty of money to accommodate mar increased marker costs. OK, all right. I'm very cognizant, and I have not looked at the materials you sent me, but I will soon. And if I have a problem, I'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you. 
Any other questions? I, I just want to thank Elise for this and um, for a couple of other members who sent me emails about things that have been done in the past. So I had a historical perspective and we'll be meeting more on this. Thank you, Elise. You're welcome, Sue. I actually have a quick question. The the 10,500, is that what it is uh, for uh, marker proffers? Are those specific signs <clears throat> that have been proffered? Yes, um, I think that Mary's brought this up in the past. Um, yes, we have in our account funds from developers for specific marker proffers. Okay. And some of those have been in our account for a very, very long time. Yeah, all right. Okay, that's what I figured. Just wanted to confirm that. Thank you. And then following up with that, the Edith Sprouse money, like is that earmarked for something specific or is it just something that? It up? was earmarked for something specific. I'm not sure that's going to happen. That's something that I'd like to discuss in the future. Okay, so um, so will that be like in a, in a budget committee meeting? Um, perhaps, yes. Okay, all right. Um, okay. Now, now there isn't a budget committee meeting scheduled yet, is there? No, there isn't. I need to see how my spring works out. And besides, we kind of need to wait till the fiscal year ends to know what our financial statement's going to be, financial situation will be. Okay. All right, cool. Excellent. This is really good. I haven't had a chance. I admit, I haven't had a chance to really look over it, but this is really good. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Elise. It, um, it does give us a, uh, a, a good eye, a good sort of map to know, you know, how, how, what kind of, what money is extra uh, that we have available to us um, and what we, what we do need to pay attention to. And yes, we do need to uh, go move forward on that financial review um, committee. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to address that. We'll come up with the deadline for that. Um, all right. Uh, sorry, I'm just lost my place. Page six. History conference. Lynn. All right. Um, I have such happy news to share with you all on a couple of fronts. First of all, I think the History Conference Planning Committee had the shortest meeting it has ever had on record the other night um, on the uh, 20, when did we meet? The 27th of April. Um, let me make sure I have this correct. And we basically have our conference nailed down. So let me kind of walk through it with you. Do you all have copies from the agenda of the draft agenda for the conference? I hope you all do because I think you got them. They should have been in the agenda packet. Anyway, so let me walk through uh, the, the conference with you. It's uh, very exciting. This is for we are Fairfax County part two, early immigrant groups of Fairfax County sowing the seeds of today's Fairfax County, and it should be S-O-W-I-N-G instead of S-O-W-I-N-G, but maybe it could mean both. Um, and obviously on Saturday the, the, the 5th. So we have, um, I'm going to share with you sort of who's been confirmed and who's not been confirmed in terms of presenters and what our thinking is. Um, uh, I, I'll, I'll welcome and then David Meyer, being the mayor of Fairfax, will also provide us a, a welcome. He has been confirmed for that date. Uh, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Jeff McKay, has also been confirmed. He may remote in or may pre-tape, depending on his schedule. Uh, same with Congressman uh, Jerry Con Connolly. He, uh, again, has been confirmed. Pending his, his schedule, he may tape or remote in. Uh, as a segue from our conference last year, which focused on Native uh, American, the Native American presence in Fairfax County and the African American presence in Fairfax County in the uh, end of the 19th century, um, uh, especially the freed communities that were developing at that time. And, and so we had folks like Judge Quander and um, Ron Chase. So our segue will be with Esther McCullough and possibly Ann Barnes. I don't know if, is Ann with us tonight? I'm not sure I saw her Not name. tonight, no, she, she has uh, um, family issues to deal with. Okay, um, so the theme then for kind of the kickoff topic will be the earliest African-American churches in their communities in Fairfax County. Esther McCullough will be um, 
helping lead this, focusing on First Baptist in Vienna, Bethel Baptist um, in the Gum Springs area, and, and any others, possibly Clifton Baptist, to, to show that really the life of that African-American community was within that church. That is where people met. That is where things were planned. This is where meals were shared. This is where people took care of one another's uh, children and one another. So a very vital piece of uh, the fabric of our community at, at that point in time. Um, we were hoping to get uh, Susan Hellman, who we hoped to talk about the Quakers of Fairfax County, which were a pretty strong presence uh, at the end of the 19th century on into the beginning of the, of the 20th. Susan is is booked for this date, and she gave us the friend of a lovely late, uh, name of a friend of hers, uh, Martha Catlin, who is the historian for the Alexandria Monthly Meeting of Friends at Woodlawn. And Tammy knows who she is. Amy knows who she is. And I had a wonderful conversation with Martha the other day. Um, she's very excited about participating um, and uh, just just seemed a little concerned that that um, all the all the work she had done in all of this research might, might just not be enough. And from what I can tell, having written a book called As They Were Led, Quakerly Steps and Missteps Toward Native Justice, 1795 to 1940, is a pretty good background. So She's a very um, thorough historian. She's wonderful. Yeah, I got that. I got that. And she's yeah. very careful about it. So I think, I think that's so. wonderful. And sure. because she is so thorough, I think she would make a wonderful presenter. So she's not firmly confirmed yet. Um, but it, it that that looks like I would say about an eighty five percent positive yes. Um, have I need to check with Liz here? Is Liz on our call? Is Liz cool Liz is and Amy is or was, but, but Amy may not know about us. Okay. I can do my best Liz impression if you need, Lynn. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I can't. Oh, I ran an actress. I knew it, Amy. I knew you always had it in you. Okay. So um, Liz has contacted a number of her colleagues. Uh, Liz has been very helpful behind the scenes in getting us presenters for this year. A Dr. Eric Larson and Dr. Uh, Michael Phillips, that latter name came from Barbara Nafe, um, to address the German presence in our area. I think it's going to be important to realize that um, this year for Fairfax County, it's going to kind of be a wider swath than just the county because things that were going on outside the county were impacting what was happening here. And many of those folks, in fact, landed here. Um, so we uh, will hopefully that that will work out with uh, Dr. Larson and or Dr. Dr. Phillips. Um, Liz also connected us with a couple of ladies, um, Dr. Martha Palante and Dr. Donna de Blasio. Um, they are um, professors at, I believe it's the University of Akron in Ohio, and they've uh, started a survey and analysis uh, called Beyond the Big Apple, Investigating the Immigrant Experience in Understudied Communities in the Midwest of the, of the country. So that kind of affects us, but whatever was happening in that area, again, as I mentioned with Germana, is kind of uh, will be affecting what's going on here in, in Fairfax County. So um, do not have firm confirmations for either of those folks yet. Then this is a fantastic surprise. I'm so happy about this. And we have uh, Jordan to thank and we have um, Susan to thank for this. Su Susan Kovac Schumann. Uh, they were able to find the names of a couple of people, Sean and Susan Dillis, a, a married couple who have done and are doing um, surveys and, and uh, research about the early Jewish immigration to Fairfax County. Um, and uh, they are so excited to be part of this uh, opportunity and have photographs and pictures of some of the earliest um, folks that were uh, Jewish and present in Fairfax County. So we may come up with actually some new information about that immigrant population in, in Fairfax. And finally, last but not least, John Murphy from the Fairfax Station Railroad Museum. I had a chance to speak with um, John at Blenheim a couple of weeks ago. One of his favorite topics is, in fact, Fairfax County's earliest Irish citizens who helped build the radio, the uh, railroads through uh, Fairfax County, and many of them uh, began the St. Mary's Catholic Church, the sweet little one that you all can see off of 123. Um, and he's very excited about being able to talk about this. He probably will not. Uh, take up a whole lot of time. Uh, the Irish population, as I've shared with some of you, is a little difficult to follow by their second generation. They were 
uh, treated so abysmally by the rest of some of the folks that were here in the United States that they they dropped the use of the word Irish and just call themselves American. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what all um, John has to say. So I am very thrilled with the amount of progress that we've we've made. We're gathering pictures right now so we can put together a save the date. Um, we are still planning a hybrid um, conference having been live streamed with Channel 16. They're all over that. They're very excited about being able to do that. And of course, we're going to do it at Sherwood Community Center. So um, any comments or questions about all of this? This is just just wonderful. We've had a lot of good work behind the scenes here. Chris has his hand up. Who has? Oh, Chris. Yeah, uh, Lynn, I don't know if you're in need of any additional speakers, but uh, this past week I was working with a, a couple who is writing a book on the history of the Jewish community in Northern Virginia and Fairfax County. That um, is the their book, same I think people. It's, is, is it is Sean it and Susan Dillis? It, it's the same yes, people. Yes. I sent them to go see you on something. <laughs> oh, oh, oh okay. love how we collaborate. Oh, Sue, that's wonderful. Chris, that's fantastic. All right, there you have it. It's, it's, mind, it's great. Thank you, Chris, though. That, that was very thoughtful of you. All right, anybody else? Anybody from the committee have any questions? Okay, we will be meeting. I, I, Lynn, I don't have a Go question, but I'm I know sorry. I used to, um, I'm delighted that Martha Catlin is going yeah. to be presenting. I used to work with her at the Advisory Council, and she, hey. <laughs> interesting little footnote, she's a, a relative of the Western art painter, Catlin. Was no. First. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's yeah. pretty exciting. She could talk about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. That's actually right. being bio. Thank you. All right. That's good to know. So well, well vetted people, it appears for the most part. Any other questions? OK, we will meet next on May. I want to say it's the 25th. I think that's what I put in my my notes. Um, Yes, May 25th, Fairfax County History Commission, we will have another Teams meeting. And at that meeting, I think we need to make sure we're on point in terms of a budget. We need to um, start talking about getting the word out with uh, Save the Date. Oh, and Jordan has a contact uh, through Rabbi Aft, who's now retired from Congregation.Ram in Springfield, who will be very helpful. He's, he's a student at George Mason. Did I get that correct, Jordan? Yeah, correct, yeah. Um, who will help disseminate um, all this information. I'd really love to have a large Jewish representation uh, in our audience this year at the conference. Yeah, we'll get it around to all the congregations too. I think that oh, that's fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so at our next meeting, we'll be talking about food. So any of you on the committee, please, please plan to be there. And I think Carol I think Herrick, Carol, you have your hand up. I do. Uh, I'm sorry. I, do, I have a question, Lynn. Uh, sure. You referred yes. to three different churches in the beginning. Yes. yes. Um, you want the there's three again? churches in actually in McLean, which you might want to consider uh, tossing into that pot, but that okay. adds a lot of churches. There's the Chesterbrook Church, the Silo Church, and the Pleasant Grove Church. Okay. Well, you know what? Since this is Esther's, I'll have mm -hmm. uh, you and Esther connect. And then we'll, we'll compare, you know, founding dates and kind of see how all that goes. There's no reason why the other churches can't be at least mentioned and discussed in some kind of bio format. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Right. Um, Lynn, do you want to continue on for awards? For awards? Really, for I have nothing for awards at this time. Okay. Awesome. I do okay, want awesome. to remind people, though, to make sure folks know that June 1st is supposed to be the deadline for all. All uh, all award nominees and okay. we already have some are uh, turned in so all right uh phyllis and mary african-american history inventory do you have a report we have a short report and then i'll turn it over to mary uh, we met on tuesday april the 12th and uh, we were wrapping up the final uh, templates and uh, images and uh, supplemental uh, African Americans working for change, which we presented or sent over to Akbar and the team. Um, also, we talked about recognition for uh, GNU students, and we'll do more talking about that this coming Tuesday. Um, we also talked about advocacy and how we would roll out to the public uh, 
the actual website. And so we're looking at maybe a press release. Um, we kicked around the idea of appearing before the Board of Supervisors and also maybe doing a webinar for the public. So our next meeting is going to be Tuesday, May the 10th at 2.30. And I'll turn it over to Mary. Okay, I um, would like to say to the uh, commissioners, thank you for you know, letting the young men present this. Um, my preference is that you do not share that silver box email to the public, okay, yet. Um, Phyllis, do you agree with that? It, it's yes. you know, still considered in draft form, and I think it'd be easier we wait until it's it's Absolutely. live, you know, and they're, they're completely satisfied with it. So um, we don't have the option of putting draft on it or anything like that. So if you would just, we don't mind you looking at it, but if you don't share it with the public, we'd appreciate it. Um, I, you know, Phyllis and, and the committee all talked about how to uh, recognize the students. And um, I would like to make a motion. Um, and Elliot, I'm going to send this to you tomorrow. So it's kind of a long motion. So don't worry about it. I move that a letter of recognition and appreciation be written to the George Mason IT engineer seniors who created the Omeka database and coordinated with the George Mason University's Fenwick Library to host the database. And I'm going to second it, Barbara. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to. Oh, go ahead. Okay, go ahead, quick. Jordan. Great idea. Yeah, no, I think uh, so. Uh, just one one word change. I'd say instead of written sent to, I recommend the letter be sent to uh, right. uh, the students. And I would also recommend that copies. I would uh, suggest that the motion include the fact that copies be sent to their professor or professors. Okay. Yeah. So and. Um, um, we want to do something kind of professional looking. Uh, Phyllis and I are going to write the letter and, and Cheryl sent it to you to put it on uh, letterhead with your signature, but we may want to go do some fancy paper. We have their mailing addresses, so we're going to mail it to them. Okay, that makes fine. So, yeah, we, I, we can do it. I have some uh, heavy duty stock, you know, like water okay. watermarked and yeah. all that good stuff. Okay. Um, uh, any other discussions? Barbara. Uh, this is a question that comes to Denise um, as well as Mary and Phyllis, and that is the that the fact that um, that we some of us have provided additional information for the county GIS people on uh, the locations of some of the um, of the communities, and as I understand, this is for an important project. So I wondered, Denise, could you just mention it? Sure, yeah. So this, um, the- Motion? Um, Aren't we in the middle of the motion? I apologize, yes. Yeah. After the uh, motion, do it, yes. <laughs> All those sure. in favor of the motion say aye. Well, Ma Mary, why don't you- I'm sorry, me? I thought we were done with discussion. I'm sorry. Well- Was there any more discussion? Uh, I, I think we we're at the end of discussion. Um, there was a, adjustments to that motion. You accepted those adjustments. Okay. okay. Yes. And did you make notation of them? Yes, I did. So can you restate the motion? I move that a letter of recognition, recognition and appreciation be sent to the George Mason IT engineer seniors and their professor. Uh, so where do I have to put that? Anyway, seniors who created the Omega database and coordinated with the George Mason University's Fenwick Library to host the database. A copy of the letter will also be sent to their professor. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Aye. Any, uh, any opposition? Motion passes. All right. So now, and now, Barbara, you had a question related to this. I apologize. I just figured we were done. And before we got, before we moved from AHI, I wanted to mention this because I think it's really interesting that we're, we're still refining and adding more information. But this was something that we did for Denise. 
Yes, and I apologize. I was not uh, I was not paying attention that the, the motion had not been carried through. So um, just answering Barbara's question. So what had happened is, and I'm sorry, Elliot has a question, and it might be about the motion, so I'm going to pause right here. Thanks, Denise. Uh, it is. I just wanted to double check uh, if someone had seconded the revised motion and who that was. Um, no. My yeah. bad. Um, so no, we did not have a, a second on the revised motion. I'll Does anybody second wish? Yes, I'll I, second. I second first. I second it again. All right. Okay, and we're not going to bother redoing the vote. It won't change. So let's go forward. <laughs> I go ahead, Denise. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, no worries. Um, so so uh, what has happened is that the um, director's office, the the one Fairfax, the equity office. Um, is aware of your project and they are uh, using the African American um, inventory data to um, map the uh, communities uh, that were um, identified. And um, they are they are looking at changes over time demographically in these specific communities and how uh, from the turn of the century through current present day, the demographics have changed for these localities. So that's that's what why the locations are important, um, not in a very specific sense, but sort of a, a broader general sense where were where were these people living and and how did how did that change over time? Does that answer your question, Barbara? Thank you. Thank you. I sure. just think it's another it's another example of what this what's happened with this AHI. And I, I for one was very excited that we're more fine-tuning where the you know the, the road numbers and all of this. It's just it's it's wonderful that so many people in the county are finding use for it. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that was mentioned. Thank you, Denise. Sure, yeah, it is. It's like there's all this pe this pent up need for this information, and now that it's all it's getting out there, it's yeah, everybody is using it. Everybody's very excited about it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And thank you, uh, Phyllis and Mary, uh, and appreciate that motion, Mary, uh, to recognize the students. All right, let's go forward. Uh, Gretchen, semi-quincentennial. Hi, good evening. Um, on the state level, the commission is working on a logo, the logo usage process, uh, grants, and how grants will be awarded and through what agencies and other kind of baseline operational functions. So legislators have not been appointed to date, so we're waiting on that. And a larger advisory committee is still being coordinated. And the next meeting is May 13th at 10 a.m. in Richmond at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. And these meetings are open to the public if you're interested and want to watch online. Um, and as far as the Fairfax County Work Group, since the last meeting, um, there has not been a meeting scheduled, but at the meeting on March 30th, uh, there was the first work group, and it's intended that the next time this group meets, they'll implement a committee structure. So that's kind of where things are. Um, if anyone has any questions, that's that's great. Otherwise, um, that's my report. Thank you, Barbara. Do you have your hand up for uh, for Gretchen? OK. Um, anybody have any questions with regards to the semi quincentennial? Okay. Pronunciation. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Gretchen. In, I just mm -hmm. want to. I just want to mention that the next meeting for the um, the county work group has or commission. It's actually a commission has been scheduled. Okay. So I, you need to get that on your. <laughs> Maybe there's something. There's something about your my communication with you. We need to work that out. But it, it has been scheduled, and I just I'll give you the date right now. Uh, and for other people who might be interested, it is May 25th at 1 p.m. at the library. Hey, Gretchen. Jordan, quick question. I'm assuming that there's been no uh, negative uh, pr uh, publicity as a result of the, 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 
the bad press that uh, the 250th national um, movement has received? Not on the state level, and just so everybody, you know, you can you can read about it online. But there has been some bad press um, nationally, but it hasn't filtered down to the local levels yet. I yeah. think on our fortunately, this is far enough in the future that people aren't focusing on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I stand corrected. The next meeting is um, I just lost it. May twenty twenty fifth. <laughs> Thank you. May 25th at 1 p.m. All right. So moving along, uh, Elise, we're going to come back to you uh, to talk about the inventory committee meeting. Okay, I'm assuming that you can read my words, so I'll shortcut it. The inventory committee was joined by Renee Lindner, Janae Lindner, because our purpose of the meeting was to consider Springfield Supervisor Patrick Herity's proposal to name the police department's renovated helicopter hangar after retired chief police chief David Rohr. The request was for, for forwarded to the commission as a result of the a board policy. But if one looks more closely at the board policy, it says to the commission, history commission, or other such appropriate county agency. And I'm making this as a motion is Anyway, the, it's the opinion of the, of the committee that the History Commission is not the appropriate agency to now ne evaluate naming the hangar. And I will make a motion that the History Commission vote to con pass that recommendation on to Supervisor Harity. The C History Commission is not the appropriate agency to evaluate the naming of the hangar. That's my motion, period, for one sentence. I sent Do we have a Renee seconds it. I second it. Oh, sure you did. <laughs> so Barbara and Janae second. Uh, discussion. Good decision. <laughs> Any questions? I have to say one kind of interesting thing was we, we had a discussion about we celebrate dead people, not live people. I thought that was in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, all right. If there is, isn't any, if there is any further, there, since there is no further discussion, um, I will uh, ask for a vote on this motion that, um, do you want to restate it, Elise? You sure you need me to? It's pretty <laughs> no, short. No, it's pretty yeah. short. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that the, that the History Commission recommend to uh, Supervisor Herity that- No, no, um, it's the History Commission is not the appropriate agency to evaluate right. the hanging up, the naming of the hangar. Exactly, and I said, there we I go. Said, you you could put anything else you want around it in the in, in your letter, but that's the motion that the committee right. is passing on. Yes, yeah. and that is the motion that will appear in the letter. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, I'm calling the vote at this point. All those in favor say aye. 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 And, and just as an FYI, Supervisor Herity is well aware of all this and he will not be blindsided. The motion has not gone through yet. Oh, I'm sorry. You interrupted the chair. Sorry. Okay. So we have uh, ayes. Any abstentions? Any opposed? Motion passes. All right. Okay. As I said, Supervisor, Supervisor Herity is aware that we're making this recommendation, so it won't come as a surprise to him. And yeah. I, I'm wondering, can I, I jump in here? I know we've already passed this, and I'm good with it. Um, do you think, uh, at least you think we might expand this? Because there's still kind of the leftover from last year from all the hullabaloo around the Wayne Nickham um, City Hall in Clifton issue a a renaming of that that has not ever happened and i i trying to figure out if the, a version of this i should alert the mayor to um i don't know give me give me some guidance here guys it's it's my understanding lynn that there was something supervisor Herity requested that yeah. the board of supervisors do and the person who will have to see it through is supervisor Herity or his staff Okay, because he did because that's what he did last year. He came to us and wanted us to to do that. Right. Okay. right. So he now has a, a new um, path. 
new recipe to to follow and he's aware of that right it's the same policy it's just a new understanding that the history okay. commission is not does not need to be involved in all of these it's just pointing yeah. their own policy yeah, yeah. So and i think be, that's uh, a good idea that, that's a good idea because clifton really is a standalone it's yeah the, the letter will also contain a statement saying that the appropriate you know the as Janae sort of summarized, that you know, it's uh, historic sites and historic persons are 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 the appropriate. That's our venue. That's our our niche. Um, okay. okay. All right. So we will continue on to. And thank you, Elise, for for presenting that. Um, do you have any comments about the 2019 annual report? Well, I do, and I'd like to add involve Ann Stunts in this discussion. I have the 2019 annual report within finishing site. I have one section to finish from, that somebody else created, and I have my own sections, and I also have, need the chair's remarks. The only person who sent me something for 2020 was Barbara Nath. So the question is, do we just let 2020 go? Or as Ann and I decided, do we ask the committee chairman to amend the report slightly, to add 2020 to the end of their 2019 report so that we can make it a hybrid report and Ann can write an intro for both. Um, I was going to say, Ann just texted me. I think she, was I'm she here. kicked off? Oh, you're I here. Made, Yay. I made okay, it. I'm here. Oh, I'm so it, glad. Teams keeps knocking me off, but <laughs> I persevere. Good. But just in case, I sent my advocacy report to Tammy. <laughs> But yeah, um, so we would so so Elise, it would end up being like a 2019 2020 report. Everybody just need to add a paragraph to to uh, to what they did in 2020. I think it'd be a mistake to miss it all together because it's such you know if all we did is brag about the Confederate Names Initiative, it's worth doing because that was a big project too. So but you know as as we've all learned, it just takes going back and reading minutes to try to refresh our memory. Right. I, I want to make sure what's um, being just how we're going to synthesize this because 2020 was a big year for the history conference. And I think my my report or our report really pretty much um, reflected that it was our first um, live stream. It was our first online uh facebooked i mean uh pulled a lot Lynn, of Lynn, i have no report for that conference well it was turned into tammy and and Subi. that's the that's the 2021 conference this is the 2020 conference oh, that's right. okay because it, we did it for the year before it's yes. still right. really okay it's got still it really Never mind. Super, it's a super got one it. Lynn. you still want yeah. to write it up because it was wonderful Right. Oh, and yeah. it already has been. It already has been. For 20, you did 2020. You yeah. did the, um, the, I, I haven't seen that. The, the, I, I should, I turned it in. I, I spent days on these, these reports. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh, well, why don't we have this? Uh, have yeah, we'll, we'll resolve this behind the scenes. Seems, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. The rest of the commission hasn't agreed to the scheme yet. I just want to point out, like, we it did exists. talk about this in advocacy uh, last month, and, um, you know, we were we were trying to figure out, the, asking the same question you just asked, Elise, exactly, like, what about 2020? What happens with that? And, um, and I had volunteered to go through and do what I had done for 2021, which is to call through the, the notes and find out what our, you know, initiatives were for that year, just to go through the minutes and everything. And so I'm happy to do that and provide it to you. But but like you said, we can we can discuss this offline. If it would be pretty easy, I think, to to make it a separate report. But if you want to tack it on to 2019, um, I don't have a whole lot no, of argument. I will not be tacking it on to 2019 if we do anything else. Okay. If we, we either do it the way Ann and I suggested or I don't have any involvement in 2020. I got gotcha. you. I'm not going to separate report. All right, Barbara. Um, yes, I I think this is an excellent idea because um, 2020, if you think if you all think about it, uh, the, the big thing was we began to 
be able to operate through, um, you know, digitally or whatever it is that we do. That's an important thing. And but the C and I from June through December, that was our. I mean, you need to talk about that. And so um, I think to combine the two because of COVID is an excellent idea. And then 21 stands on its own, and it's a totally different approach. This year is how you're handling 2021. 2020 is the is the last of the previous time, and I think it should be all in one like that. And everybody just stop and think about what you did. The reason I'm I did mine is because I had to write the chair, the CNI chair, plus what we did. So um, yeah, I'm very much in favor of that. I think it's an excellent idea. Takes care of it, and then we're caught up. Thank you. I agree. I think it sounds like a great idea. Great idea. Um, um, does anybody, does anybody have, have any doubts or questions about it? Do we need to vote or is this just one of these? No, I'm not, I'm not going to suggest voting. I think if there's no objection, we just continue on and we let you, elite, elite, you uh, advocacy and, elite, and um, at least work it out and, and uh, make it happen. Okay, and good. just I enc just encourage all the various committee chairs to cooperate uh, with the requests. Sure, Esther. I'm not sure with all this verbiage, it's like a committee meeting going on during meeting. What are we doing? What, so, what is going forward? So what is going forward is that, because um, we have, you know, it's sort of a divided uh, division of labor with regard to our annual reports and trying to catch up with the annual reports. So you are sort of having a committee meeting in the context of this larger meeting, but that's because we have sort of two separate committees that are going to cooperate and work together. And that's what we've just arranged so that 2020 and 2019 will be a combined annual report. OK. All right, let's move on to advocacy and uh, the more recent annual reports. OK, <clears throat> we met on April 21st. Um, next meeting's May 19. And I sent something to Denise on that. Um, I'm, you'll get the annual report from Tammy, if that's okay with you, Tammy, in a minute. Um, put your calendars for, it's still June 28th, Tuesday for Board of Supervisors, I think, in the morning. And the more people who show, it's always good. Um, the rest of the meeting, we talked about our, our budget. How, you know, we're gonna start printing things, having some costs there, the various, um, it's bigger issues like the staff request for the Board of Supervisors. Um, and, uh, and we focused a lot on events. We talked about this last time too, how um, at our last meeting of this group that um, we're really encouraging everybody to do events in your districts and represent the, the uh, History Commission. Tammy will tell us about her Mount Vernon Environmental Expo. Um, and Sue has this has worked it out to go to Tinner Hill Festival for free. Um, so we'll we'll want some help with that because it's a long day. What is it? Ten to eight or something? Um, yeah, it's 11, and it's eleven to eight. We don't have to be there at the yeah. very end. How many exactly? That it it will fall apart. That part will fall apart. But we'll all be fighting over who gets to go and help help so we can watch let's hear the beautiful music um so we're making a list of events uh in the county that we know about you guys keep your eye on what's going on in your district and um and come to us advocacy when you've got ideas of of a, an event you'd like to have a history co commission table and tammy's keeping a checklist of what you need to take to an event you know, and and we'll we'll formalize that, but you'll hopefully get a lot of support from us if you say I want to go to this event in my district, and they said I could have a history commission table, and then we can we can work with you to get one going. All right, over to Tammy and the annual report. All righty. Um, I was going to say w things have come together pretty well. I think we have all of the pieces now um, so that we have our, I'm not going to call it our final annual report, but we, ha we have everything we need to make it final. Um, there's some little tweaks that, you know, that need to happen 
the um, we you know just added the budget part at the last minute, so there's some tweaks in there just to make it align with what's been done in the past, and if we make any changes, to make sure that they're thoughtfully done. Um, and so so that's really ready to go. And so it's really just polishing. Um, I think that uh, that the PowerPoint was shared at the same time. Um, so that we're we're nearing completion on that as well. So so we look like we're lined up pretty well for the June meeting. Um, and I want to thank everybody for providing comments. We we did get a lot of very thoughtful comments from all of you, and that that was really very helpful. So um, so that's where we're at with annual report. Are there questions? Yeah, yeah. And when is the meeting of the board of supervisors? At, at the what time on the twenty eighth? It's it's. It's usually like what ten o'clock or something, and then you wait around for hours. Now that um, sounds delightful. Not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, well, it's, they, worth it. it's worth it. They let you know the order of the agenda, so you can kind of check in periodically and see where they're at. You know, so you know to <laughs> check in once an hour until it starts to get close. Um, my 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 method is I enjoy the really strong Wi-Fi there. And get all my work done while I'm waiting. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, anything? Any other questions? But yes, yeah. Do it is really nice to have a good bunch of history commission members. We're never asked to speak. It's always the chair who gets to talk. But I think you get comfort knowing that if you were over a barrel, Cheryl, you know you could go. Ah, uh, Sue, could you answer that question? <laughs> exactly. Exactly, and that's happened. That has happened. Yeah. Good. All right. So we'll proceed along. Uh, markers and marker project, Mary, and and thank you, uh, Tammy, and and advocacy committee for all your work on the annual reports. And looking forward, I guess, to that presentation <laughs> in June. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anne's going to be it's there with Subi me. Did, She's it's, I just have to, to say, yeah, Subi did most of the heavy lifting on the report. I was just the wing, the wingman. All right. Uh, Mary, markers and marker project. Uh, for the marker committee, I've inquired uh, today about the frying pan uh, Civil War marker that's been out for painting. I've not gotten a response yet as to a status. I did find out it's not been delivered. So I want to check up on that because it was, I thought it was middle of February that they picked it up. But I also inquired of them, uh, there was an anticipated uh, raise in the cost of the markers. And I did <laughs> find out that that did happen. Uh, the cost of the markers will be uh, $2,685. That's included shipping. That's a $345 increase uh, from previous times. Uh, so now the total cost, including the uh, shipping and what we've been charged for installation for a marker will be $3,580. Okay. And um, I know that the installation will not increase until December. It, we'll just wait and see there. And then, of course, if a marker goes on uh, VDOT uh, property, which Carol and I can discuss with you about the advisability of trying that, uh, it's an additional $110 fee for the permit from VDOT. So that's just information, and I'll make sure that it uh, gets uh, out there for, we have on our website, it could cost up to $4,000 for the marker, you know, and so we're covered. We don't have to change anything on the website, uh, but just if you get people asking, uh, one half of that is uh, 1700 something for the um, shipping and installation. Uh, for the county marker project, the uh, uh, deadline for submissions was this past Saturday, April 30th, and the county has received a drum roll here, 58 submissions. Wow. So wow. from the slow beginning, we really did a, a big push at the end. And one's a Girl Scout troop, and, and it's just really exciting. So the next step is that it will go to the um, voting committee to review the submissions. And that's it for marker project and for marker committee, if anybody has any questions. 
All right. It is really exciting to hear that uh, we've gone up to 58. We For a long time, we were at like four or five. So, right. um, so that was really, really cool. All right. Um, you want to talk, continue hey, on about, thanks. oh, thanks. sorry, thanks go ahead, for, Bob. Yeah, I just wanted to thank Mary for everything. Yeah, it's a good job. Okay. Well, Cheryl and I have been working on this marker project. Seems like we've had a, a meeting a week for the yes. last month and some twice a week. So anyway. I'd like to I'd like to follow Bob and thank Mary for um, for um, handling a request that I got over the weekend from a Springfield resident who had uh, uh, some recommendations for markers and I just lateral to her and she <sighs> took care of it thoroughly, completely uh and uh just beautifully so thanks a lot mary appreciate oh, you're welcome. that you're welcome all right okay mary you want to proceed with cemetery preservation and 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 actually i do want to add my thanks and acknowledgement of all the work that mary's been doing it's kind of yes. amazing yes yes it's very amazing um with cemetery community i just like to give you updates amy mentioned about the uh, uh summers um dedication uh, ceremony. And uh, it was so nice that the DAR reached out to the community and put flyers on the houses. So there were residents coming that knew that there was a cemetery there, but had no idea who was buried there. So it was really nice uh, ceremony. Uh, let's see, for Laurel Grove, I'll be, uh, unless it rains, we'll be out there on May 14th, demonstrating how to clean markers Got a request from Pohick Church to uh, clean um, General Brown, who was the physician to George Washington's marker. So going out there on May 11th, uh, we'll be at Sons and Daughters on the uh, 23rd. That is our largest cleanup. This is the Sons and Daughters at uh, Woodburn Road. Uh, must have 50 or 60 trees that dump <laughs> so many leaves. And so we'll be cleaning that up. Um, and also uh, I will be uh, sending tomorrow to Denise our um, draft of our memoranda of agreement and would ask if you would send it to the county attorney uh, for their review. And that is my report. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions, comments? Okay, moving along. Um, Esther, oral yes. and ethnic history. Thank you very much. It's good to see everybody. The Ethnic and Oral History Committee has an interview scheduled on the 12th. We hope to get Naomi Zevin in. So the project is called Fairfax Looks Back at Our Leaders, uh, County Leaders. So if we happen to interview a former mayor or someone that is not a former supervisor, the word leaders would fit that description. Uh, we will have two interviews. I have not confirmed the other one on that day. It seems May is a busy time for Channel 16, and we could only get that afternoon of the 12th. The, now, uh, Esther, can, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt here. I have on my calendar the 13th, Friday the 13th. Is there something I'm sorry. changed? Friday, yes, okay. the okay. 13th. That's okay. correct. I apologize. That's I apologize correct. for interruption. Lynn okay. is going to interview Naomi. And Naomi was a little bit skittish about it, but I think she's calmed down now and she's ready to get on that TV set. She is. In fact, she had worked there before. So she's very anxious. If you've met her, she's she's very enthusiastic. So I'm sure it will be a great interview with the two of them doing it. Uh our next meeting is May 24th, because it's the night before Lynn's meeting. It's at 7 p.m. using Teams. And committee, if that's not 
an appropriate time, if that's not a good time, let me know because our attendance has been low. And I want everybody to have input that wants to be on the committee. So we have a fairly large committee. We don't necessarily need other members in the committee. We need work done. And we're getting ready to look at a new project. So we don't want to slow that down. But other than that, that's our report. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, any questions or comments? All right. Moving along, Bob, do you have anything to add about the resident curator program? No, I, I think the, the report Stephanie gave was uh, spot on and um, it's kind of exciting to see this um, Margaret White Gardens develop because mm -hmm. not only are we dealing with the curator in the house and the barn and, and so forth, there's a whole host of other garden things that are going on, just like mm -hmm. um, at Green Springs, you know, and there's 13 acres of land there and it's right. landscaped beautifully and it, it's just wonderful property. I'm glad to see it going in the right direction. So I think she did a great report and I, I, beyond that, I don't have anything to add, not at this point. Thank you. All right, thank you, Bob. Appreciate those comments. Um, for bylaws, I just, just want to mention, you know, Anne obviously is not here, but I do want to mention that on May 10th, um, we, the Board of Supervisors will hopefully be approving our uh, latest for, set of bylaws that went, um, be, I think we finished it about a year ago. Um, but if anybody wishes to um, attend that, that meeting, you're welcome. Um, and I, I'll, I'll be there just in case they have any questions. Uh, hopefully it won't. Uh, hopefully they won't. Um, what, all right. Are, are we on early? Uh, I don't know that there's a specific time. I think Denise said we gener they generally schedule those fairly early. Is that correct, Denise? Yes, it's like an administrative item, so it would be at the top of the agenda. But it, we might be it might be on after presentations, which kind of take they can take a while. Yeah. Yeah, like like Anne said, uh, rely on that Wi-Fi and just bring your laptop is my strategy <laughs> there. Um, and 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 Anne, you're welcome. Anybody from the bylaws committee who wants to attend, uh, Anne Barnes cannot. She has, um, uh, as I said, some family issues that she's dealing with right now. Um, ARB uh, liaison, uh, Lise, I apologize. I did not. I missed your uh, report in terms of appending it to the the agenda. Um, but it is in the share file. I, I don't think that's a problem. It is in the share file. The most notable thing that has happened was that last month was the first month that we had applicants from Holland Hills. So the nature of the ARB has changed as has our work workflow. Yeah, that's going to be quite a bit of uh, an increase with uh, over 400 houses there, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Fairfax City, David. Well, uh, Chris mentioned several things that happened in the city of Fairfax, history related, and um, we had a very successful history day at Blenheim. Appreciated the support of the of the um, the commission relative to the Virginia Room and the book sale. Um, so all that is is a, a good collaboration between the city and the county. Um, I've reported several times on Old Town Hall. The the good news now is that the contractor has actually started the restoration of the building. If you go by, you will see uh, an I-beam structure that was installed this week to hold up the portico roof. Uh, once that is all in place, the actual um, porch itself will be removed in its entirety. Um, that is not the original uh, porch. Uh, it was put there in the 1950s. Um, it violated every uh, engineering principle. The pillars that were or the, the footers that were holding up the porch did not align with the pillars on the uh, that are holding up the roof. So mm. the stress yeah. level, the, from an engineering perspective, the, <coughs> the the stress created going down down the pillars was 
going on top of the portion being distributed laterally, which uh, has, uh, I don't know what I don't I don't know what they thought in the 19 late 50s, but that that's all going to be removed. And we have an, uh, ample photos of the building in 1900. We actually have an interesting photograph of all of the original construction workers standing in front of the building when it was complete. And uh, so we have a, a marvelous picture of how the structure looked when it was first constructed. And um, so we're going to put that back in with a couple of ADA modifications to it. Um, then the second phase of the building uh, is still under being is still being planned. That's a two a little over two million dollars, and we are going to put in new bathrooms, new HVAC, uh, upgrading the ADA access on the east side of the building, and doing a lot of exterior uh, restoration of the building. So that's, but the the portico project will, as I reported previously, will be finished by the end of October. So we're pleased about that. We don't have any issues with supply chain or labor. So we're we're, we're, we're pretty positive about that. Um, many of you may know that we, uh, a, a year and a half ago, actually it was really in, in during, between June and September of 2020, we established an initiative called Connecting Fairfax City for All. And we, uh, in, we, we, it was a, it was a program to address systemic racism, and the, the roots of um, uh, some of the uh, existing nomenclature in the city. We made significant progress initially in changing some of the most egregious um, uh, expressions of uh, the lost cause and uh, the Jim Crow era, but. Um, so we changed the name of the middle school, we changed the name of the high school mascot, changed the name of the street that the high school is on, and removed uh, some UDC monuments and uh, markers in the city. Um, but we have all of these street names, we have a seal, and we have some other markers, historical markers, that are going to be rewritten to be more inclusive and um, to be more accurate, quite frankly. And um, the, the most tenacious part is, is the, the naming of streets. It's generated a tremendous amount of controversy, as you can imagine. Um, and the city council will be uh, deciding which streets may be named, renamed um, in June. And then we'll have a 60 day comment period for suggestions of of new names to be considered for the streets that will be renamed. Um, there doesn't seem to be as much concern about the seal um, or the markers program, and uh, we'll be moving forward with that over the summer as well. Keep your eyes peeled out for uh, an article in the Washington Post in the next few days uh, by Tony Olivio, who is going to do a, a significant article about this whole issue within the city of Fairfax. Um, and if that is um, really the only items I have to report at this point. Oh, Sue, um, we are also and we we were also involved in this budget process. I don't know why the budget budget process in all the jurisdictions in the region was was so vexing this year, but it was. And um, we completed our work last night. And so um, I'm supposed to go out of the country on Friday, but I will, um, with all of these witnesses here, uh, talk to Joe Mondoro and or uh, uh, Dahlia tomorrow. So, Thank, you. Thank you. We have very right. nice fix. Thank you, David. David. Okay, that's all I have to report, Cheryl. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Bob, you had your hand up. Um, yeah. Um, question for David. Uh, the co the uh, column restoration and the renovations you're doing on that building, I'm curious to know if you're able to take pictures of what it was when it was originally built and then what kind of modifications are being made. Would those photos be, of uh, copies of those photos be available to be um, placed in the Virginia room? Yes. Um, 
the um, uh, the short answer is yes. We can have both the original photos and the uh, we're going to certainly document from a visual perspective every phase of the restoration and also all of the um, uh, engineering drawings, architectural drawings for what we're doing now. <clears throat> but um, I believe that Susan Gray um, has will will certainly be. I, I will check into that to make sure that copies of those are available in the Virginia room. I, I think that would be great. Um, researchers could get a lot from that. Um, I, I know when we do restoration on old buildings, um, you know, it's good to have information. It's not possible always to have it. And um, I used to have an older gentleman that was a partner in my practice and you know, all the stuff we were doing renovations on that was new architecture when he was 18 years old. <laughs> so he knew how things were put together. I had a, I had a good chance at knowing what it was before we opened it up. But, you know, it's good research. Researchers could get a great benefit from that. So thank you. Yes, and uh, the, the the column that fell, um, as, as unfortunate as it was, when it fell at 4 o'clock in the morning, no one was around, which was very mm -hmm. helpful. But it broke it broke into two pieces and that allowed us to get to be able to go on the inside of it and see um, how this those columns were actually uh, manufactured in 1900 and um, handcrafted. It, <laughs> it was all done by hand and it was done in phases. It's it's it, I won't go into all the details of it, but for those who are really interested in um, architectural history, um, the ability to get inside that column and actually see how it was created it was it was pretty fascinating. Um, yeah, it was a magical so, feat for the era. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah. You know, we have to remember there were there was no internal combustion engines, there were no computers, no calculators. All the stress, all of the stress calculations and designs were done. With a with a pencil and a piece of paper and an eraser, <laughs> right. right? And 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 most of those 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 uh, big columns and everything were were done with domesticated animals and pulleys and ropes. Yeah, so. totally amazing. Yeah. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really Thank you. Library exhibit on this. I'm sorry, Sue. What was that? It said not only a Virginia room. Um, repository, but also a really fun exhibit on this as you walk into the library. That's I, I think uh, uh, it would be a, a. I think people would find it very interesting to see. This is the way it was before the 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 the, the pillars failed. This is what we did in the interim. The process by which it was restored would be very, very interesting. Um, and of course, when the building was first constructed, there were no uh, underground utilities, there were no street lights, there were no fire hydrants. All of those things I just mentioned are going to be relocated into a, in a, in a, away from the front of the building at considerable expense, but it's going to make a world of difference in terms of how the, the front of the building is presented visually. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Really appreciate that. Um, in terms of website coordination, uh, I, I did post or asked our, our webmaster to post the um, anniversary booklet for the Fairfax County Colored Association. So that is now on the AAHI uh, website. Um, and if there's anything else that you are expecting to see on the website that I haven't done, just send me a quick email. I may have lost track of some of the, the list, but I think otherwise we're pretty much up to date on the website, uh, except that I do owe Elise uh, you know, a review of, she, she's asked for um, looking at the inventory uh, application materials. Uh, and then uh, announcements. Sure. Oh, sorry, Lynn, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of the uh, website, can we get a save the date on there for the history conference, at least verbiage? We can talk about that offline, but um, yep. I think we Not should get that on there. Go ahead and get that on there right now. Good idea. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh, let's continue on to announcements. Let's see who has anything to announce. Sue. 
just one very sm small thing. Um, Fairfax County Historical Society is having a Herndon walking tour and meeting at the Herndon Train Depot Museum, 717 Lynn Street, Sunday afternoon, the 22nd at two o'clock, and it'll be a walking tour. And Barbara Glake is who is the Herndon Historical Society historian and a really fun speaker. Uh, we'll be giving a tour, so just come, be outside, have fun, let's talk history. Uh, I would do some more Mount Vernon ones, except that some of those are in, at night, Tammy, sorry. <laughs> okay, anybody else has an share an announcement? Okay, Qu quiet week. Tammy, is that you? Did you s raise your hand? I have one too. I Hey, Tammy, you're muted. <laughs> I'm muting and unmuting. It's OK. So Sue gave me the segue. So um, uh, we had a meeting of the Mount Vernon Regional Historical Society last night and um, and our local Virginia florist um, did a, um, a tour through Mount Vernon maps through the years. And it was really amazing. Uh, he spoke for about an hour and 45 minutes. And and uh, a couple of people had to leave, but most of the 60 people who showed up stayed through the whole thing and couldn't get enough. So we had to pick up really fast so the library people could go home. <laughs> so um, it was really terrific. But anyway, so maybe we'll we'll have some things in the middle of the day, Sue, also. So um, we've got a tour coming up, I think. Um, is it Woodlawn? Sally would know. Is she still on? Yes, that maybe Sally can weigh in with our next event. I've already forgotten what it is. Yeah, a uh, tour of Woodlawn. I think it's July 15th, but I'll have to check that out. That's yeah. great. All right, keep us updated. Lynn. Um, all right, so next Wednesday, the 11th, uh, Mrs. Robert Walker will be visiting the National Association of Retired Federal Employees, and mm -hmm. uh, it will be a Zoomed presentation which is always fun to stand up in my office and talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one for you. Um, sure, Sally. If you're free on Saturday, Eagle Fest is being held at Mason Neck State Park, and it's always just a grand celebration, you know, with traveling reptile shows and birds of prey and so forth, but also many historical and county organizations are represented. And next year, perhaps the History Com Commission might want to be there. Uh, I know the Friends of Fairfax County Archaeology is usually there. So um, it's always a lot of fun all day long. Music, food, everything. <laughs> yeah, good one to add to our list of uh, events. All right. Anybody else have anything they wish to share with the group? No. Nope. You guys want to see right. one of my projects? <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Oh, look at that. Oh, a lovely rendering. Nice, nice watercolor. Nice watercolor. Yeah. This is yeah, one of beautiful. our earliest ending meetings, Cheryl. I, yes, it is. I was just How about to say, I think we are. Applause we're... for that, guys. Steve <laughs> Sherman should be really happy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, we are. Uh, it's at 943, and we are going to adjourn unless there is anybody who really wants to hang on and keep talking. Nope, go have some. <laughs> go have oh, come on. Else. <laughs> oh gee <laughs> nice meeting guys thank you thank yeah. you all thank yeah. you all for making this